Hey, I'm Christian Blood with ATM Aquarium Products, and I'm here to discuss the ATM product colony, and more specifically, nitrifying bacteria. What exactly this bacteria is, why it's so important, and what exactly is the nitrogen cycle. To start with, when we're talking about ATM's colony, whether you've seen it on the television while watching the show, maybe you've run across it online, maybe at your local fish store, Perhaps you're wondering, what exactly is Colony? What does it have to do with a brand new aquarium? And again, what exactly is nitrifying bacteria? Nitrifying bacteria, quite simply, is the aerobic aquatic autotrophs that are responsible for breaking down inorganic compounds in water. In this application, we're talking about, first off, ammonia. This will be the first inorganic toxic compound to show up in an aquarium that has no biofilter. This is perhaps your aquarium when it's new, you've got water, but no fish yet. So when fish go in, they're gonna bring waste. What's gonna happen to it? We can't flush it. So Colony basically steps in to do that job. When it comes to ammonia, we rely on nitrosomonas bacteria in fresh water, nitrosococcus bacteria in salt water, still handling ammonia, nitrobacter handling also toxic nitrite, Nitrococcus in salt water, again handling the nitrite. If we've made it to nitrite with colony, we know that things are moving with the aquarium. The waste is being processed, and then we know we're going to be seeing plenty of nitrate, usually sooner than later, typically three to six days, depending on the fish load and or feeding habits. But either way, we know that when we start a new aquarium, uh, we know exactly what we're starting with when it comes to a biofilter. Instead of waiting to grow up, we let things die back. We get the ball rolling, and that's why ATM relies on Colony. Okay, now that we have a better understanding of nitrifying bacteria and ATM's colony, let's talk about your new system. How are we going to bring in nitrifiers in the event we don't use Colony? In this case, we're going to be looking at the long cycle. This is when we rely on either fish, in some cases, to bring in a very, very small amount of nitrifiers into a new system, maybe some kind of media exchange coming from another system. That's going to amount to a handful. It does not compare to a bottle of ATM's colony. It's really not even close. This is why the instant cycle will take ATM days, while the long cycle could take anywhere from four to six weeks. Would you really want to wait four to six weeks before you even found out if your system could support nitrifiers, let alone fish? Days is much better. Walking to the grocery store is something you can do only if you want the exercise. Otherwise, you get in your car, you go to the store, you come back, and you cook dinner. And this is why ATM utilizes Colony. Now, as I think we all understand, if we take a great white shark, we take him out of salt water and we put him in fresh water. We can't expect the great white shark to survive, and the reason is obvious. The water he's been placed in has parameters that he is not suited for. We have a similar situation when it comes to nitrifying bacteria, although not quite as severe when it comes to survival. But if you expect your bottle of colony to, to act as though we say it is on the bottle, we do recommend the following water parameters. This is nitrification anyway, colony or no colony. This is how your bugs are going to behave. In freshwater and saltwater, we have the same range of temperature, 74 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. When we're talking pH, things get a little bit different, slightly lower starting off with freshwater, 7.4 to 8.0, and then a little higher in marine at 8.0 to 8.3. Both freshwater and salt water, we want our alkalinity at 90 plus parts per million. This is your trace elements, your water hardness. Uh, this is very key. If you're below 90 ppm in your alkalinity, it can really slow things down. Oxygen is key. Nitrifying bacteria are aerobic aquatic autotrophs, meaning that they do require oxygen and water, but oxygen is key here because the more oxygen they have, the better they're going to act. Put a couple of uh, air stones in your media chamber. I do recommend that. Get the optimum results with proper aeration. Keep your water moving. When it comes to phosphate, have some. You don't need a lot, but have some because if you have none, you have no nitrification. Concerning the nitrifiers themselves, do not expose them to a temperature of more than 110 degrees Fahrenheit. If you do so, you will have a loss in bacteria very quickly. And keep in mind, if they freeze or they dry, nitrifiers will die. 
And now we arrive at my favorite part of the discussion about nitrifying bacteria. I'm talking about the myths and the misconceptions concerning nitrifiers. Starting with the idea, for example, that nitrifying bacteria cannot be bottled. If this was true, colony wouldn't exist today. The truth is that nitrifying bacteria have been successfully bottled for decades. It simply isn't new. Also not true is the idea that nitrifying bacteria have to be refrigerated. And while it is true that we can refrigerate if we choose to, to get a better concentration or a stronger concentration, we don't find this necessary with the average bottle of colony for the average household aquarium. This is why your colony is good at room temperature in a shelf stable format. Nitrifiers do not have to be refrigerated. While nitrifiers are aerobic, they are also aquatic, meaning they do require water. This means that nitrifiers are not in the air we breathe. Also said in recent times is the idea that nitrobacter of the freshwater strains of nitrifiers will not work in an aquarium. Did the fish scare them? Of course not. Nitrobacter works in an aquarium, it works in wastewater. If nitrifying bacteria are exposed to proper parameters and there's food, they're going to work. They always have and they always will. And my favorite misconception of all, the long cycle is the best way to go. Here's the truth. The long cycle is guesswork and guessing is never, ever as good as knowing. Okay, you have your aquarium, you have your fish and you have your colony. Let's talk about a few keys to success moving forward just before you get started, beginning with shaking the bottle very well. It says that on the label for a reason. Light feeding on your first day. It's okay to skip feeding day two or three. Here's why. Colony is going to float around in your aquarium for as many as three, sometimes four days. All depends on the flow rate, but let's give it some time because once the bacteria has completely settled, you're going to find that ammonia or nitrite, anything still seen, is going to melt away very quickly. Feed lightly early on. Daily water testing. Test kits are available. Let's use them. In these opening days of a new aquarium, things have a tendency to change quick. Some things are good, some might not be so good. But again, test kits are available, so let's know what's going on. Your water is changing by the day. And water parameters. Stay within the parameters that we discussed. If you deviate, they're always correctable. But if you stay outside of those parameters, you can't expect colony or any other nitrification to occur the way it should. Stay within your parameters. And finally, oxygen. As we've said several times, nitrifying bacteria are in fact aquatic aerobic autotrophs. They need water, but they've got to have air. The more air you give them, the better they're going to work. Colony is an outstanding nitrification product and we can't wait for you to check it out. You can find Colony at your favorite pet store or your favorite online retailer. And always remember to always trust the shark.